Do you know this guy here? That is legendary investor Stanley Druckmiller. And after the recently published US inflation data spooked investors because inflation in August, according to the CPI numbers, was worse than expected. Because core inflation, which is also closely watched by investors, rose 0.6%, a larger increase than in July. Well, Druckenmiller made a statement that shocked investors. And he made headlines when he warned that there is a quote unquote high probability that the stock market will be flat for an entire decade. And he raised concerns that the Federal Reserve will need to continue to lift interest rates aggressively in order to bring prices under control, following the trajectory of what is already the steepest tightening cycle ever recorded. So whether Druckenmiller has a point, what another heavyweight superstar investor thinks about this topic and how investors best prepare for the decade ahead, this is what we will discuss in today's video. And so without further ado, let's get started. Okay, hey there, my name is Ryan Zellman and I would like to start this video by asking you a question. Have you ever heard of the September effect? Well, if not, let me explain what this idea is about. The September effect refers to the historically weak stock market returns that can be observed during the month of September, which has been the worst performing month on average going back yeah, nearly a century. And September 2022 seems to be no different. The S&P, for instance, is down 5% already so far in September. And on September 13th, the Nasdaq actually experienced a particularly brutal trading day during which every single stock of the index, 100 in total, ended the day down, which is a rather rare event and shows that there's a lot of fear in the market right now. But obviously, even if you take a longer term view than just looking at one individual month, stocks have also performed pretty poorly with US stocks being down 21% year to date. And it seems as if after US stocks had actually bounced back sharply from the previous June lows, which has seen the S&P 500 down 23.5% in 2022 so far, we are about to test these lows again pretty soon. This graph here actually compares the 2022 bear market to previous ones based on the magnitude of the drawdown and the calendar days it takes to bottom. And obviously, according to this chart, stocks could continue to de decline, especially if you take into account the Fed's more recent announcements, such as another hefty 75 basis points interest rate hike, bringing interest rates to the highest level since 2008 and announcing that they expect more rate hikes through 2023. Now, if you consider all of this, it should come as no surprise that the all familiar doom and gloom financial gurus like Jim Rogers are already very vocal about the fact that stocks can of course go much lower from here. Rogers said in June that this will be the worst bear market he experienced in his lifetime. And another financial guru, Nuriel Rubini, who predicted the 2008 crisis, sees stocks sinking another 40% from here and expects a global recession. And finally, Morgan Stanley believes we haven't seen the lows yet. To quote the firm, we think the lows of this bear market will probably arrive in the fourth quarter with 3,400 the minimum downside and 3,000 the low if a recession arrives. And this brings us to Stanley Druckenmiller, who is by no means a doom and gloom financial guru. No, he's a widely respected investor in the finance community, especially with regard to his expertise in economic growth sectors and also his ability to almost perfectly time some of his short and long term trades. What's important to point out is that Druckenmiller already made headlines back in June this year when he gave an interview during the 2022 Sun Investment Conference, where he was interviewed by John Collison, the co-founder of Stripe. During this interview, Druckenmiller highlighted two historical facts that have undefeated track records. The first one was that once inflation gets above 5%, it has never come down until the interest rates set by the Fed were greater than the measured change in the CPI. And the second historical fact that he highlighted was that once inflation is greater than 5%, it's never been tamed without a recession. And the recent September announcements of the Fed seem to confirm what Rockmiller was saying back then. 
with the inflation rate standing at 8.3% for the 12 month ending in August. The Fed's projections for the appropriate monetary policy in 2023 are certainly heading in the direction of 5%. And arguably interest rates could very well go higher for some time because historically interest rates are not really high right now. And interestingly, another widely respected global macro investor, Ray Dalio, shares a similar view. He very recently wrote an article on LinkedIn and in that article he outlined that he expects the long-term inflation rate as well as the Fed's fund rate to be close to 5%. As explained, it starts with what the inflation rate will be. Right now, the markets are discounting inflation over the next 10 years of 2.6% in the US. My guesstimate is that it will be around 4.5% to 5% long term. And he also wrote, interest rates may have to rise to the higher end of the 4.5 to 6% range. This will bring private sector credit growth down, which will bring private sector spending and the economy down. I estimate that a rise from rates where they are to about 4.5% will produce about a 20% negative impact on equity prices. Which brings us to Drug Miller's more recent comments on the state of the stock market and his outlook for the coming month. In a discussion with Alex Carp, the CEO of data company Palantir, Drug Miller said that, quote unquote, there's a high probability in my mind that the market at best is going to be kind of flat for 10 years sort of like this 60-60 to 82 time period. Let me just show you a short sequence from that discussion. For those of you who don't know, I make a living supposedly forecasting uh, changes in the economic environment and in the financial markets. And this is the hardest environment I've ever encountered to try and have any confidence in a forecast six to 12 months ahead. The odds of a global recession and a change in the macro economy are about as high and as severe as I've seen them in, in decades. When I look back at, at the bull market we've been in, financial assets really started in 1982. All the factors that created that not only have sort of stopped, they've reversed. We had uh, a guy who wanted to deregulate as opposed to regulate we had a chairman of the Federal Reserve named Paul Volcker, a little different than Jerome Powell. Um, and maybe most importantly, we were right on the cusp of globalization that led to sort of one world, a lot of productivity, disinflation. The response after the global financial crisis to that disinflation was zero rates and a lot of money printing, quantitative easing. That created an asset bubble sort of in everything. Now they're like reformed smokers. They've, they've gone from uh, wanting to print a bunch of money to like driving a Porsche 200. I know there are Germans in the audience driving a Porsche 200 miles an hour, like not only taking the foot off the gas, but just slamming the brakes on. So there's a high probability in my mind that the market at best is going to be kind of flat for 10 years, sort of like this 66 to 82 time period. So in that clip, Druckenmiller not only addressed interest rates and the monetary tightening that we have already talked about in this video, just to state some obvious facts or obvious conclusions, stock markets tend to perform relatively poorly when interest rates rise as higher rates may hit company profits and lead to a declining appeal of stocks relative to other assets like bonds which are less risky, but provide a relatively better return now. And this concept was actually famously articulated by Warren Buffett when he said that interest rates are to asset prices what gravity is to the apple. But on top of that, Druckenmiller mentioned the process of deglobalization. For starters, deglobalization can be defined as a political and economic movement towards a less connected world, where Nation states prefer local solutions rather than global institutions, global economic trade, trade treaties and free movement. And obviously, if we are entering a period of deglobalization and a reversal of globalization persists, there's a high risk that yeah, we will see productivity go down, which is one of the major drivers of stock returns. So stock returns may not be what they used to be during the 
a period of increased global trade and yeah, international cooperation. In this context, I would like to quote from a write-up on Alibaba that yeah, was published on the Value Investors Club. Globalization has created a global network of trade and the network is so vital and existentially important that membership is a matter of national life and death. Joining the network isn't just a path to prosperity, it's the only path. Conversely, not joining the network or being kicked out consigns a nation to the dustbin. And yeah, the process of deglobalization may very well already be underway. As shown in this chart from 2016, globalization has actually slowed since the global financial crisis of 2008 and 2009. Now, what does all of this mean for investors? Well, first of all, I would argue that even Druckenmiller would admit that he has no idea what the returns of stocks over the next 10 years will actually turn out to be. There's obviously a lot of uncertainty with regard to long-term forecasts, and especially if you want to make forecasts for the entire next decade. To quote Paul Black here, we don't believe anyone can accurately predict where interest rates are going, where GDP growth is going to be, what the Federal Reserve will do. The old saying, if you're going to make predictions, make a lot of them, because you're bound to get one right. But the truth of the matter is, it's very, very rare that people get predictions right. And even if stocks may perform poorly during the next 10 years as interest rates goes up and stock multiples come down, you have to realize that with stock multiples declining, future expected returns will actually go up. If you just look at the period cited by Druckmüller, even if stocks performed poorly in the 60s and 70s, stocks were flat during that period. The fact that the Schiller PE ratio hit a multi-decade low also created a perfect setup for the superb performance of stocks in the following decades, with the Schiller PE ratio expanding almost fourfold. And later in the interview, Druckmiller also pointed out that even during this period between 1962 and 1980, some amazing companies such as Apple or Home Depot were founded, which turned out to be spectacularly well-performing stocks. So please acknowledge that not trying to time the market, not making emotional decisions and having a long-term investing horizon is all that matters and all that you can control. And, th and thus, this is what you should focus on. And that's what Druckmüller would also recommend. He's famously quoted saying, good investors are successful not because of their IQ, but because they have an investing discipline. Now, what's next? Well, to learn more about what Druckmüller forecasted back in June, I recommend you take another 10 minutes to watch the following video. Take care.